Okay, yes, I have decided to get rid of all of the Fire TV devices in my house. And there's actually five good reasons why I'm going to do this. Now you might be thinking to yourself, am I going to get an Nvidia Shield? Maybe a Roku device? No, no, no. Maybe a Google Chromecast or an ONN streaming box. But the truth is, if you wanna know the best ecosystem to invest in, you're gonna to have to stick around for the rest of the video. In reality, there is five reasons I'm gonna be removing all of these Fire TV devices from my house, and these are it. So I think number one gets me more than anything, and it's something that really nobody wants to deal with once you buy a product, and <laughs> that's, that's ads. And Amazon has a ton of them in their ecosystem. It's like no matter where you look on your Fire Stick, you either have some sort of banner ad, or you have one of those square rectangle ads, or even now if you have Prime Video through your Amazon Prime subscription, you have B-roll ads that are playing either at the beginning, the middle, or the end of your show, movie, whatever you're trying to watch. I mean, come on, doesn't everybody wanna watch a McDonald's ad right before they watch a brand new movie? I have to charge you to remove them. It's like an extra $3 a month on top of your Prime subscription. And it's weird because Amazon has other products like their tablet where you can pay cheaper prices to have ads built in, or you can remove the home screen ads by paying a fee. But for the Fire Stick, they've just slowly built it up. And realistically, this was part of their strategy, sell a super cheap, affordable, great device, and slowly start to monetize it. And that's really what they've been integrating and building towards. And there are dedicated streaming devices that don't have any ads, and some that have very few at most. And I feel like if you buy a device you should not also have to pay for your time with ads. Ad supported stuff should give you things for free, not something you've already paid for. So these next two, we're gonna kind of talk in a combo because they're, they're both kind of related. And I wanna start off with a feature that Amazon got rid of or is getting rid of, but it's still on my device. So some people are saying it's gone. Some, a lot of people are telling me it's still there. That's ADB debugging. Now this is an important feature. That's basically just a command line tool that allows you to communicate with a device. So it's been used for a ton of different apps. Now, Tech Doctor is another creator in the space and he has apps such as App Killer and Cash Cleaner. And these apps do ensure, and or sorry, they do rely on, I said ensure, but they rely on ADB debugging being enabled. But now that they're getting rid of that feature, both of these apps would no longer be possible to be even used on Fire TV devices. Now, another popular app that also has the same issue is Wolf Launcher. And there's a reason for that. Wolf Launcher was basically an app that would allow you to customize your home screen. So you could basically get rid of all these ads on the front and you just have a separate boot up screen when you log in. But Amazon has started to block that feature. And now even Wolf Launcher is pretty much completely useless. And this goes back to the fact they want you to stay and look at their ads as much as possible. And this does kind of lead into number three, and that is third party installs. Now, as of now, we can still install third party apps. Now, a little while back, this was years ago, Amazon changed it. So to access developers options, you would now have to go to about and you'd have to click on your device five, six, seven times. I think it's around five times. And you would now get the developers options, which means you could install unknown apps so on, so on. But in fact, what has happened is Amazon made that not only as hard as possible, but they're also trying to scare you away and block certain installs as well, which means it's gonna get harder and harder to go ahead and install third-party apps on your Fire Stick. Now, if you're a veteran pro and you watch my channel, maybe not, but for the average user, they wanna make it as difficult as possible. Now, AFTV News even pointed out this new warning that's popping up on third-party blacklisted sites where it says app disabled, uninstall, potentially harmful app. And this is just on Launch Manager, which has to do with Wolf Launcher. This app has been disabled because it can put your device or personal data at risk. You can keep the app on your device, but you'll be unable to use it. To remove the app and recover the space on your device, please select the uninstall button. Now, me and you know that's a whole bunch of baloney right there. Uh, in fact, yes. Are there third-party apps that could potentially steal your data and stuff? Yes. Are there official apps that for sure do that? 
Yes, of course there are. It's such a silly concept. But again, this is another way of Amazon trying to scare you, but then also disabling apps at the same time. And it's freaking ridiculous. Now, before we go any further, I want to take a minute to talk about my brand new resource I created just for you. Now, if you decide to keep your Fire TV device, but you really want to learn more than what can even be talked about on YouTube, I suggest checking out our brand new guide that's listed right here. Now it's for sale on our website with the link down below. And right now I have an opening special where you're going to get a 50% off for the next week at $9.99. Now the great part about this e-guide is it comes with everything you need to know about your Fire TV stick. You can share with your friends, family, and on top of that, it comes with all the future versions of the guide. That means when I make any updates, you can download the brand new version completely free off your UpgradeGuy.com account. So make sure you go ahead and check it out down below in the link. Now, reason number four is pretty straightforward and it kind of involves the last two reasons. It's the brand new operating system that they're going to be coming out with. And that's right, they're, gonna, they're probably going to be ditching Fire TV. Now, I don't want you to stress because most of your Fire TV devices now, they're not going to be upgradable. And what this means is Amazon is most likely not going to be able to push updates on a brand new operating system. But of course, moving away from Android means that third party installs will probably no longer be possible or take a long time to be figured out by developers. And this means further investing in the Amazon ecosystem right now probably isn't a good move until they actually show a dedicated direction that they're moving in. Now, I personally think Amazon was in a great position to really push the envelope and become the biggest creator in the smart home market. But in my mind, they just clearly haven't done this. And that brings us into reason number five, and that is the lack of smart home integration. Now, Alexa is great. I can tell it to do many things. I can speak to it. I can pick a TV show. And there's tons of products that you buy that are now compatible with Alexa. But the reality is there's two bigger players in the market that have made a much further push in the smart home market and integrated their streaming devices and their other smart home devices into one simple product, one seamless experience. And you just simply don't get that with Fire TV devices. And those two companies that are really pushing the envelope in my mind are Google and Apple. They integrate well with their phones. It's all in one system. You can use them typically across devices as well, especially with Apple in this brand new antitrust suit where they're probably going to be forced to start integrating some of their services, such as the infamous blue text message into other devices and actually allow that. So now down to the main Question, what ecosystem would I suggest involving yourself and would I suggest investing in it? And for me right now, I really think Google is probably the furthest along in the smart home and streaming technology market. They're integrating into a ton of different devices and they have a wide range of benefits and products that actually work really well. Now I like Apple too, but they have some integration concerns when it comes to other devices and they typically just aren't as available in other third-party devices apart from official Apple products. Now I want you to let me know down below in the comments, what ecosystem are you thinking involving yourself and what ecosystem do you want to invest in? Because this decision could either save you a ton of money on not having to repurchase products or it could lose you a ton of money when their smart home products eventually fail. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.